Missions Diary of U-94 Early History, First and Second War Cruises Little could be learned of the early history of U-94s. The only survivor who had been on all ten cruises was Siegfried Harch, a machinist's mate, who professed to remember practically nothing of his boat's early history. U-94's first commanding officer was Captain Lieutenant Herbert Kupisch of the 1932 Naval Term. He made five cruises in U-94, during which time he developed a case of, of nerves and was relieved on August 18, 1941, by Eitz. Kupisch, as an Oberleutnant in 1937, was second in command of U-9 in 1939. He was promoted to Captain Lieutenant. On May 25, 1941, he received the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross for his successful attacks on enemy shipping. There is some evidence that he once commanded U-58. Kupisch was credited by a high command communique in June 1940 with sinking a British auxiliary cruiser in the Moray Firth. If this be true, Kupisch could have been in another U-boat. However, it should be pointed out that this claim cannot be associated with any known attack. Kupisch has held a shore appointment since his retirement from sea duty. U-94 seems to have been laid down about the summer of 1939 launched and commissioned in the summer or autumn of 1940. She probably underwent the usual trials in the Baltic Sea following her commissioning. Harch stated that the first war cruise lasted six weeks. From mid-November to the end of December 1940, the U-boat putting into Lorient on New Year's Eve. He said between 10,000 and 20,000 tons were sunk in the North Atlantic. After two weeks in port U-94, sailed for the North Atlantic for her second war cruise in mid-January, remaining out until the third week in February. According to Harch, about 20,000 tons were sunk on this cruise. Harch's estimates of sinkings coincided with German claims of considerable successes for Kuppisch late in 1940 and early in 1941. Furthermore, prisoners from U-433, Admiralty's CB, 4051, 34, January 1942, stated that while Oberleutnant Hans I was serving as Kuppisch's executive officer, U-94 sank 30,000 tons. This would have been on the first and second war cruises, for, according to Harch, these were the only cruises which I made in U-94. Harch said that Heller was the engineer officer on the first six voyages. This probably is the Heller designated in the 1940 German naval list as Feinrich, NG, reserve class of 1938. U-94 put into Lorient after each of these war cruises, even though theoretically based on St. Nazaire as part of the 7th Flotilla. Third War Cruise A petty officer prisoner stated that U-94 sailed from Lorient on her third war cruise late in February 1941, after a brief stay in port. This statement is consistent with previous knowledge that she was in Lorient on February 20, 1941. She remained at sea from four to six weeks. Prisoners stated variously that they operated in mid-Atlantic and the North Atlantic. About six ships were said to have been sunk, of which the total tonnage was estimated at between 25,000 and 30,000. Late in March or early in April, U-94 returned to Lorient, where she refitted for three weeks. A prisoner stated that a new executive officer named Kosbat listed in the 1940 German naval list as Leutnant Sir C, class of 1937, succeeded I before this voyage and remained with U-94 through the Seventh War Cruise. Fourth War Cruise According to several prisoners, U-94 left Lorient for the North Atlantic on her fourth war cruise late in April 1941. At some time during the cruise she attacked a convoy sinking four ships with one torpedo each. Prisoners from U-93, under Captain Lieutenant Klaus Korth, said that sometime between the last of April and June 16, 1941, U-93 attacked a convoy in conjunction with U-94. Three destroyers counterattacked for seven hours, dropping many depth charges, but prisoners asserted that the boat was not damaged. On May 9, 1941, the German high command claimed that Kupisch recently had sunk four merchant ships in a strongly protected convoy in the North Atlantic. 
The only other success on this cruise mentioned by prisoners was the sinking of a tanker sailing alone. Several torpedoes were said to have been fired at her before she finally sank. More than one torpedo was said to have missed. Prisoners estimated the total tonnage sunk on this cruise at 38,000. During this cruise, Kupish learned by radio that on May 25, 1941, he had been awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. A German broadcast claimed that altogether he had sunk a destroyer and 17 armed merchant ships totaling 90,260 tons and had carried out mining operations close to the British coast. The mine laying presumably was done in a previous U-boat. To celebrate the award, the crew fashioned a large cross out of lead and hard rubber which they fastened around their captain's neck. Between June 3 to 5, 1941, U-94 put in at Saint-Nazaire instead of returning to Lorient, and henceforth she operated from Saint-Nazaire. It is known that U-94 gave up two electric and two air torpedoes on June 5th. She remained in port between four and five weeks. Fifth War Cruise U-94's fifth cruise was Kupish's final one before his transfer to shore duty. It was the only one on which he failed to sink anything. U-94 left St. Nazaire early in July. She was out about five weeks operating somewhere between Gibraltar and the Canary Islands. She fired only one torpedo at either a fast steamer or an auxiliary cruiser which turned and escaped. One prisoner believed U-94's intended victim picked her up on listening gear in time to take avoiding action. Prisoners said they sighted a convoy but wouldn't explain why they didn't close to attack. U-94 returned to St. Nazaire in mid-August, probably August 18th, inasmuch as she is known to have surrendered 13 torpedoes, 10 electric, and 3 air on that date. Prisoners were unable to explain why they carried 3 air torpedoes instead of the usual 2. They denied having a third upper deck container. Heinrich Miller, who had served as Obermachinist, machinist on one or more previous cruises, did not make this cruise, having been sent to officer's school. He later returned to U-94 as engineer officer with the rank of Leutnant, Ing, Ensign, engineering duties only. Kuppish's nervous condition apparently had grown worse on his last cruises. One prisoner stated Kuppish was exceedingly nervous when departing on and returning from a cruise, but that once at sea, his anxiety lessened. Prisoners said he held himself apart from the crew. Eitz succeeded to his command of U-94 on August 18, 1941. One prisoner who saw Kuppish a year later said he looked fresh and apparently recovered. Nevertheless, other prisoners expressed the opinion that he never would go to sea again. Sixth War Cruise On August 30, 1941, U-94 took aboard 12 electric and two air torpedoes and on September 2 sailed on her sixth war cruise under the command of Eitz. At the end of this cruise, U-94 put into Stettin for a long overhaul. Prisoners stated they had operated this time in the vicinity of Greenland. Statements varied as to the number of ships sunk. One prisoner said four merchant ships were destroyed totaling 29,900 tons. Others said they sank five or six, amounting to 32,000 tons. The large tanker San Florentino, the Pegasus, and two English colliers were claimed to have been sunk. All were said to have been traveling alone. Prisoners believed that more than one torpedo was fired at the San Florentino. No convoys were sighted, and U-94 was not attacked at any time. After nearly five weeks at sea, U-94 turned toward home waters. She proceeded to Bergen, where she remained in port three or four days. The crew were lodged in a hotel in order, as one prisoner said, to have a rest and change. A Messerschmitt pursuit plane and three minesweepers escorted U-94 from Bergen to Christiansand, where she put in for one night. The crew was allowed to go ashore. It is possible that U-94 entered still another Norwegian port for a night, inasmuch as one prisoner said she traveled only during daylight en route to Germany. U-94 ran into Kiel for two days where she originally had been slated for an overhaul. A prisoner stated that the crew was overjoyed when they were ordered to Stettin for the repair job, as Stettin offers much greater opportunities for entertainment than Kiel. During their brief stay in Kiel, 
the crew was entertained at dinner by Herbert Schultze. Inasmuch as Eitz once served as Schultz's executive officer aboard U-48, it might be expected that Schultz took pleasure in whining and dining Eitz and his crew. U-94 reached Stettin the third week in October, six weeks after leaving St. Nazaire. Crew members received three to four weeks leave in staggered groups, while U-94 was thoroughly overhauled at the Oderwerke. One prisoner stated that the interior of the boat was refitted in detail, and that on the ways she resembled a half-completed U-boat. A machinist's mate affirmed that new diesels were not installed, and he did not believe the hull was reinforced against mines. U-94 seems to have returned to Kiel at the beginning of January 1942, the run from Stettin being used for tests. A number of new men joined the boat at Kiel. Seventh War Cruise there is good reason to believe that the repair work on U-94 at the Oderwerke in Stettin suffered grossly from inefficiency, negligence, or sabotage. The U-boat was in such precarious shape upon leaving Stettin that, according to prisoners, she almost sank on the trial run to Kiel. There is evidence that deficiencies were discovered on the trial run. A part was removed from a valve permitting water to stream into the boat the first time she attempted to submerge. Some of the wiring in the diesels was cross-connected. The batteries and some of the apparatus connected with the batteries were damaged. The control room indicators for ahead and astern were inverted. The main bilge pump was ruined. Apparently there was considerable trouble stirred up by authorities after U-94 reached Kiel. Presumably U-94's ills were remedied in Kiel before she set out on her seventh war cruise. This was the second cruise on which U-94 sank nothing. One of the crew blamed rough weather for the failure. U-94 spent the last few days in Kiel taking on provisions and torpedoes. She appears to have left Kiel at the end of the first week in January. Prisoners' statements disagree as to whether they put into Bergen for a day en route to the Atlantic. U-94 was stated to have operated west of the Shetland Islands. She had several air alarms on the way out, but apparently was not attacked. According to one prisoner, she sighted no ships and expended no torpedoes. The cruise lasted only about a month, and U-94 put into St. Nazaire early in February. One prisoner stated that the cruise was supposed to have lasted longer, but that they were called back. He could give no explanation. This was Kozbat's last cruise as executive officer. The second watch officer was Walter Schmidt, who later succeeded Kozbat as executive officer for the remaining cruises. The engineer officer was Heinrich Miller. Eighth War Cruise U-94 remained in St. Nazaire only two weeks after her brief seventh cruise. She departed on her eighth cruise in mid-February, returning to St. Nazaire early in April, less than a week after the British commando raid of March 27, 1942. This cruise was U-94's first one to American waters. She appears to have operated between New York and Chesapeake Bay. Prisoners' statements on the number of ships sunk varied from five to eight, but all agreed that the total tonnage was near 40,000. Several freighters plying alone were sunk, and according to two prisoners, two ships were sunk out of a convoy while U-94 was en route homeward. Prisoners stated they came close enough to the United States coast to see land and at night could see lights on land. U-94 was attacked by a small coastal craft to which she turned tail and made off. Prisoners seemed to think this strange as they felt they would have been more than a match for such a small opponent. Another time, prisoners said, a blimp sighted U-94 dropping bombs intermittently for several hours but causing no damage. This attack seems to have given the crew a fright as the shallow water in which they were operating limited their maneuvering. The U-boat made the round trip across the Atlantic at slow speed. One prisoner stated they were three weeks crossing each way, spending only one week off the United States coast. A prisoner stated that they carried torpedoes back with them but declined to reveal how many. The executive officer on this cruise was Oberleutnant Walter Schmidt, who had been newly advanced. The second watch officer, Gibeshus, and the engineer officer, Miller, 
all of whom remained with U-94 until she was sunk. Ninth War Cruise According to prisoner statements, U-94 left St. Nazaire on her ninth war cruise early in May. One petty officer stated they operated south of Iceland. Another prisoner said they were not farther south than Newfoundland. This prisoner expressed the belief that each Monday a convoy passed them in the same position. Most prisoners agreed that six ships from two convoys and one Canadian sailing vessel were sunk, totaling 30,000 to 35,000 tons. They said they attacked the convoys on the surface and escaped without submerging. One torpedo was said to have been fired from the after tube. Several U-boats were admitted to have participated in one of these attacks, but Captain Lieutenant Johann Moore, believed to be in U-124, the only commander prisoners would identify. Several counterattacks by destroyers and corvettes were admitted, prisoners stating they once were compelled to remain submerged from five to ten hours. Apparently no damage was inflicted by depth charges. After seven weeks at sea, U-94 returned to St. Nazaire, probably between June 26 to 28. She remained in port five to six weeks, during which time the crew had staggered leave. Tenth and last war cruise, U-94, departed for the Caribbean on her tenth and last cruise on Sunday, August 2, 1942, after a month in St. Nazaire. Most of the crew seems to have received two weeks leave before the final cruise. Prisoners said they were not surprised to learn that they were to go to the Caribbean in their 500-ton U-boat. In fact, one said they had been promised this trip to southern waters, inasmuch as previously they had operated only in the cold waters of the North Atlantic. U-94 sank nothing on her final cruise. According to prisoners, they sighted nothing until intercepting the convoy which they were preparing to attack when sunk. They fired no torpedoes. Their course from St. Nazaire lay past the Azores. They cruised at slow speed. The crew were allowed to take sunbaths on deck during the crossing. Even the technical men who, prisoners said, were not permitted beyond the conning tower when there was danger of air attack, were permitted to relax on the upper deck. The crossing appears to have been made without incident. U-94 made landfall in the Windward Passage, probably about August 20th. Eitz was said to have suspected the approach of a convoy on August 27th when he sighted flying boats which he presumed to be serving as convoy scouts. Eitz seems to have spent a good part of that day dodging these planes, which, according to Gabishus, U-94 was able to outmaneuver for the full report on the sinking of U-94, there is a link for the video in the description below.